years later, hopefully we can get some, shed some light into the art and science of optometric prescribing because while we, when we prescribe lenses, we're, we're prescribing for the inside of a patient as well as the environment and that's what people don't get. Everybody's putting glasses on people saying, let's make clearness in the outside environment and we don't care what it does to your body. We don't care if it affects your stomach, if it affects your shoulder muscles, if it affects your posture, because we're not looking at that. But Nora is a group that does. So my goal by the time my lecture is done at 10.45 sharp, as I was told, the, is to have you walk out of here saying, wow, I, didn't real, I, I did realize all this was connected, but I didn't realize that I have it in my power to actually pick and choose what to prescribe based on art and science uh, so that my patient is the most comfortable on the inside. I don't have any disclosures because uh, we're just talking about our information. I want to provide the neuroscience concepts which show you that there is a mind and eye connection. That it's not just what you see, it's how you interpret what you see. So for instance, this complete chaos of losing my suitcase, losing my, my computer, losing my toothbrush, losing everything, could trigger my autonomic nervous system to go into fight or flight mode. So if I were a different personality and not so geeky, I might be going, ah, look at this, and I might have sweat pouring out of me and, and frozen muscles and all that. That's my autonomic nervous system. But my mind goes into logic mode, not emotion mode. So my autonomic nervous system is fine with all this because it's like, hey, this is me, take me or leave me. But there's a neuroscience shows all these concepts. I'm doing the same thing I was doing 25 years ago and now all the neuroscience textbooks are starting to show it and people are coming and saying, hey, can you lecture here because you know all this neuroscience. So it's, I, I helped with Deanne's uh, help to get Babak here to show you that the neuro, neurophotonics, the neuroscience groups, they all need to work with optometry. So we want to discuss a variety of optometric tools and how each tool has a different mechanism. Just like when we're treating glaucoma, and you say, well, with glaucoma, we get the concept. The concept is there's a pump that pumps fluid in your eye and there's a drain that drains fluid out of your eye. When we want to give glaucoma medicines, we have choices. We can either shut off the pump or open up the drain. That's the same thing we have in functional optometry. The different, it's really fascinating as the field grows. We want to teach you how to relate the symptoms that your patients are coming with to the different treatments you can do and to demonstrate the interaction of optometry's three domains, the mind, the body, and the environment. I have to thank people for believing in me. Deanne Fitzgerald was the one who called up and said, hey, can you talk to Nora and can you work with Babak? Absolutely. I want to thank Benoit, who's somewhere over here, for uh, pushing me that extra mile and always challenging me and always sending me emails saying, hey, did you see this? Did you see this? This is right up your alley. And here, here's some colored glasses. Play around with them and see what happens. And then the Nora members for accepting that this is the wave of the future. We as optometrists are in the prime position of changing the face of healthcare because with people like Bob Box Group, we are working directly with brain function. As I said earlier this morning, the retina is not a thing that's connected to the brain. It is the brain. It's a chunk of brain tissue. And we're right in the forefront of, of altering it. Um, for graphics designs, I get a lot of people saying, I like your little designs. Well, Martha David is sitting over there, so you should go thank her for coming up with these really cute little, uh, little pictures of how uh, space expands and constricts and, and shifts. Mara Sachs did a beautiful funnel diagram that only a handful of people have seen that's at the end. It's not in your handouts because it was just completed about three weeks ago. And uh, Dorothy Mason for putting together some of the other diagrams that people like. Um, Al Sutton is my mentor. He just died at 97 years old a few years ago. And he always quoted Thoreau. Um, one of the things Thoreau said was that it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see, how you interpret what's going on. 
And what Al used to say, which I didn't understand for a long time, was that it's the flexibility of your adaptability that is true intelligence. And I didn't understand what flexibility of adaptability meant. But I, then finally I got it. We're these creatures who have to adapt to environmental changes. So when we have a patient, we're changing the environment and we're measuring how do they adapt to it. We're sticking prisms in front of them, lenses in front of them, filters in front of them, colors, all these things, and we want to see how they adapt. And the more flexible their adaptability is, the less effort they have to put into dealing with their environment and the calmer their nervous system is. And the calmer their nervous system is, their body is more calm, the more their mind can open up and deal with things.